Hi, my name is Hervé Gross with Total, and today we will be talking about GeosX, an open source multi physics multi level simulator for CO2 storage on HPC. This presentation is co authored by Joshua White and Randy Sedgast, both from Lawrence Livermore National Labs, and I will be giving it on behalf of all GeosX developers. Let us start by asking ourselves the following question. Why do we need an HPC reservoir simulation tool for CCUS, carbon capture, utilization, and storage? Well, this is what a typical carbon storage injection facility may look like. And I'm going to highlight one by one the reasons why it is difficult to simulate such operations with traditional tools. First, here are the wells. Well injectivity and well integrity can be difficult to properly evaluate if you do not account for poromechanical deformations that occur due to the injection of supercritical CO2. Then, in the reservoir itself, when you increase the reservoir pore pressure, you change local stresses, thereby creating a risk of fault activation. For the route in the reservoir, you want to simulate exactly where your CO2 moves, and most importantly, where it is trapped. Which brings me to number four, you need to control seal integrity, and not just in the near future, but for decades to come. Last, when injecting CO2, you need to quantify and mitigate all risks or of triggering any surface expressions, compaction, dilation, or even micro seismic events. All these potential risks need to be properly quantified for safe and perennial CO2 storage. So how do you do that? Well, while it is possible to approximate some solutions with traditional reservoir simulation tools, you may face some limitations. The first ones are based on physics. We're working here with a com complex fluid, with complex mass transport patterns, and most importantly, um, both the fluids and the rocks interact with geomechanical phenomena that must be coupled. So the coupling here between different physical phenomena calls for multi-physics approaches and we are also facing other simulation limits due to scales. We have a large problem at hand, um, larger than most reservoir models, and we need to simulate it for hundreds of years. But we have solutions. How do we solve those issues? Well, we need to build and expand on traditional reservoir simulators. The first solution is obviously to design tools for exascale computing and make any reservoir simulation tool native to HPCs. For that, you need to think of scalability, of course, but you also need to be thinking in terms of portability, accounting for the fact that hardware evolves much faster than most software development standards. And if you do this properly, you cannot just refactor existing simulation tools. It is best to design new simulator from scratch with coupled physics in mind and think about removing all bottlenecks that slow you down when you have coupled systems. Now we're not the only ones thinking about that. It's a vision that is shared across the community. Here is a report by the Mission Innovation CCUS, a group of 250 experts coming from the industry and from academia. This was published in September 2017. In this report, they highlighted the need for a refocused HPC effort beyond traditional reservoir simulation. Having multi-physics capabilities is largely motivating this HPC focus. Now in June of 2019, the same committee published their report this time laying an emphasis on the need for an open source software that would set an open and transparent standard for simulation of CO2 storage. So the community highlights a demand for HPC capabilities as well as openness in simulation software. So how can we build such a tool? Well, we rapidly realized that this is not something you can build alone, and we started to develop partnerships. First, with Lawrence Livermore National Labs. Their extensive experience of scientific development for HPCs, as well as their knowledge of geomechanics, was really key here. GEOS, the ancestor of GEOS X, was developed there, and in fact, GEOS X itself was seed funded in 2016 by the ECP subsurface project. Then we have Stanford University. The Energy Resources Engineering Department at Stanford 
has been developing reservoir simulation tools for the past last 40 years, and more specifically, in the last 20 years, they built a general purpose research simulator that is designed to work precisely in the multi-physics space. Numerical methods for coupled physics is thus their forte. Stanford also contributes to the project through an internal collaboration with the University of Padua in Italy, and they are experts in numerical methods for contact mechanics. And last, we have Total. Total brings use cases. We know what the target applications will look like. We have a good understanding for how scientific computing resources are deployed in production environments, and we understand what our clients, our affiliates, and our partners in the domain need as far as functionalities and interfaces. We started this joint project in 2018, and we expect it to last until 2023. But of course, it's not institutions that work together to build such a shared code. It is people. If we start with the principal investigators here, we have Joshua White at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Hamdi Chelepi at the Energy Resources Engineering Department of Stanford University, and myself. Here at the top, you see the team at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. We have about 15 people working on this project, and I want to highlight here Randy Sedgast, here at the top row, who is the main architect of this code. Some Livermore personnel here work more on domain-specific research, others work more on the code infrastructure itself. Then we have two total employees, François Hamon and Thomas Gazzola. The former is a researcher, and the latter works more in infrastructure. Then we have Stanford University with Professor Chalepi, uh, researchers, postdocs, and PhDs. And last, we have contributors from the University of Padua. This amounts for about 30 contributors to the code in total. Let's take a look at what GeosX can do today. First, we have flow in porous media. This is traditional reservoir simulation, fully implicit, isothermal, with compositional multiphase fluids, black oil and dead oil simplifications, and of course, CO2 brine capabilities. Then we have solid mechanics, with implicit and explicit time stepping for small and large strain formulations, elasticity, plasticity, and tightly coupled poro mechanics. Then we have advanced numerical schemes ranging from the usual two-point flux approximations for finite volumes and going to more advanced hybrid mimetic schemes. We are using linear solvers through a unified linear algebra interface to Hyper, Trilinos, and Petsy. We can work with discretely fractured media with embedded fractures, we can handle fault contact mechanics through Lagrange multipliers, and we have some hydro fracturing capabilities. Our finite element interface handles most common finite elements. Well, this really allows us to work with a large range of unstructured grid types. And talking of grids, our mesh and data IO are all based on standard formats. We can connect with meshing packages like GMSH, or more traditional domain tools like Petrel and their corner point grid format. And all our 3D outputs are either in silo or VTK formats, which allows us to connect to visits and to pair view. And last, the software is open source under LGPL 2.1 license. Currently, you see we're at version 0 0.20 and this was released and announced at the end of last year. As you can see, this is really just the beginning of uh, the story. If we look beyond functionalities, GeoSex is designed to do two things really well, research and industrial applications. On the research side, about 19 journal publications were published since 2019 using technologies inside GeoSex. On the development at the moment, the code is about 200,000 lines of C++ instructions, 75,000 inline comments scattered over about 1,600 C++ files. We also have a relatively rich documentation of about 270 files that are compiled using Sphinx. For the deployment, we use CMake with Lawrence Livermore's BLT macros to build across platforms. 
DeusX is in fact built on top of several third-party libraries, and two in particular that I want to highlight now, Raja and Chai. I'll come back to those in a second. To ensure a smooth deployment, we use a tool called Travis, Continuous Integration, and we target eight different HPC configurations. So every time code is merged into our main branch, Travis does code style checks and ensures that all our unit tests are passing. We also run integrator tests to verify our results against the baseline and run nightly benchmark tests. We use two libraries called Caliper and Spot to time our runs and to verify that we do not comp compromise performance when adding new features. Last, people and applications. Well, we already mentioned Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Stanford and Total. But using Geos X as a base for work and research, we're creating new partnerships with the INRIA in France, with the University of Torino in Italy, with TU Delft in the Netherlands, and some of those partnerships are going to extend Geos X beyond its current capabilities. Of course, we're open to more collaborations. Let us now talk about performance portability strategy for Geos X. It is based on three important libraries that we use as our pillars for portability and performance. The first one is called Raja. Raja offers a portable parallel loop execution through backends, turning generic C++ code into specific languages such as CUDA or OpenMP without requiring to specifically develop for these languages. Raja also provides portable wrappers for common operations, atomics, reductions, threading strategies, kernel fusion. Then we use a library called Chai copy hiding array abstraction. Chai takes care of data motions to different memory spaces and is built on top of another library called Empire. Chai integrates really well with Raja and ensures that memory motions are under control even inside Raja loops. Last, an extension of Chai that was written specifically for Geos X is called LV Array. This extension allows us to handle objects that Geos X is built on multi-dimensional arrays, sorted arrays, CRS matrices, sparse matrices, and all these libraries are licensed under a BSD3 clause. Let us now measure the performance of Geos X in a very simple scenario. We are using a low-order finite element linear elastic solver to show some performance evaluations, a situation where we update stresses on an, on an elastic system. We have three different implementations of the same type of solver leading in the end to the same results. The one in blue here is an explicit element kernel. The one in orange is also explicit, but it reads stresses before computing a differential update. The one in green, still explicit, computes the full update. As you can see, the blue one has the best performance and achieves close to ideal performance with a measured performance of 5.8 teraflops. And most importantly, None of the kernels here are constrained by bandwidth limits. This was achieved on a V100 system called Lassen at Lawrence Livermore National Labs. Even if we fully understand that these are ideal conditions, these results and the metrics that have been put in place to achieve them serve as a guide for our developments. Moving away from ideality, here is an example of real reservoir data 100 years of CO2 simulation. This is a reservoir in the Gulf of Mexico. The data set was built with the help of UT Austin Gulf Coast Carbon Center. We have folds, the grid is unstructured, properties are geostatistical, and we used mimetic discretization methods. As you can see, we can evaluate here the pressure fronts and the saturations changes over time. This kind of information would be helpful to design a CO2 injection operation. Now last, let me open up and give you a few pointers if you want to use and, and perhaps contribute to GeosX. It is quite simple. If you go to geosx.org, our landing page, under source, you have a link to our GitHub repository. From here, you can clone or fork the code and all the third-party libraries that you need to get going. I hope I was able to give you a clear understanding for why HPCs were really important when dealing with multi-physics simulations like that, give you a clear and complete overview of how GeosX was constructed, 
and maybe entice you to, to learn more about it by checking out the code. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.